In a previous video, I discussed securitization. And securitization occurs when an investment bank collects a bunch of different types of assets. Assets that would be difficult to sell. For example, mortgages, student loans, credit card debt. Pools them together and then creates a new asset. And that new asset, people who buy that new asset, receive a payout as those loans, for example, are repaid. So as someone pays their mortgage, interest in principal is paid, and that money is passed on to the people who have bought these securities. Now, at the end of that video, I discussed a little bit about collateralized debt obligations, and I want to go into a little more detail here. Now, these are what are referred to as structured financial products um, that pull together cash flow generating assets like mortgages, bonds, and loans. And again, they generate cash flow because people are making payments on their mortgages, uh, bonds are receiving interest payments or the repayment of principal, likewise with loans. Um, repackages, um, what happens is, is the company that creates this CDO repackages this asset pool into different classes based on risk known as tranches. So the difference between uh, general securitization is that rather than just creating one class of asset, here a, a number of different classes of assets are created, each with different levels of risk. And the reason they're created is people have different appetites for risk. Some people want to take more risk and receive a higher return. Others are looking for very, very safe investments. Um, the loan collateralized or the name collateralized debt obligation comes from the fact that the mortgages, the bonds, and the loans so are the collateral for this pool of assets. The risk of each tranche is determined by the priority it has on the collateral in the event of default. Investors, um, as I mentioned before, have different tolerances for risk, so by doing this, securities are created that will satisfy the needs of many different types of investors. Senior tranches will be less risky because they have higher priority and will have a higher credit rating. The lowest ranked tranche will be what's referred to as an equity tranche because what they receive, they're last in line to receive their payment. Much in the same way that a, a stockholder owns equity in a company and the stockholder is last in line in a bankruptcy proceeding. Bondholders get paid first, employees, government gets paid their taxes, etc. And then, if there's anything left over, equity receives the payout. The early CDOs were construct constructed by Drexel Burnham Lambert. Okay, they were very famous for being in the junk bond business. Um, Michael Milken became uh, very famous, actually went to jail um, in a junk bond scandal. But what they did is they assembled portfolios of junk bonds issued by different companies and created these CDOs with these different tranches. As many as five parties are involved in constructing CDOs. You have the securities firms who approve the selection of the collateral, structure the notes into tranches, and sell them to investors. You can have CDO managers who select the collateral and often manage the CDO portfolio. So somebody has to decide which assets should go into the CDO, okay, which bonds, which mortgages, etc. Rating agencies such as S&P or Moody's, um, they assess the CDOs and assign them a credit rating. Now, during the financial crisis in 2008, um, Credit rating agencies received a, a very bad um, reputation for doing such a poor job of rating securities such as these. Financial guarantors who promised to reimburse investors for any losses on the CDO, CDO tranches in exchange for premium payments. So they're, they're essentially working as insurance companies. And this is a way to boost the rating of the, of the CDO or of the tranche of the CDO by saying, I have a guarantee. Okay, if, if I can't, if, if um, this tranche doesn't pay, okay, this company will make the payout for me. 
um, and then the investors such as the pension funds and hedge funds who buy the CEO, CDOs. So here's a diagram of what something like this looks like. You have a bunch of assets, mortgages, loans, bonds, etc., and they're placed into this asset portfolio. So the CDO manager collects these assets and oftentimes a securities firm, an investment banking house, will set up what's referred to as a special purpose entity. That's the CDO. And they raise money so that they can buy this asset portfolio, okay, calling it a, a CDO. Okay, we have a portfolio manager who's going to manage this CDO, receives a fee, and provides a service. Now, the interest and the principal gets paid to the investors who are over here, okay, who buy these assets. And the proceeds um, from the people who bought these assets are used by the special purpose entity to create this CDO. And you can see we've created some different classes here. There's a class A, which might have a triple A rating by S&P or Moody's. Okay? These are the ones that are first in line or most senior in the event of a bankruptcy. Um, then you may have some what are referred to as mezzanine debt classes. Okay, they're kind of in the middle, where they're, you know, okay ratings. Okay, uh, A, A2, okay, B double A, triple B, etc. Okay, so they're not as well rated as the senior class, but probably you're going to get paid. And then the riskiest of these CDOs is the equity portion. Okay, this is the case where if the company goes, if the CDO goes bankrupt simply because people are not repaying their loans. Okay, this is what happened um, during the financial crisis. People started defaulting on their loans, on their mortgages. Money wasn't going into the, um, wasn't from this portfolio, was not being paid to the CDO. The CDO now had trouble paying uh, all the tranches. Okay, the first couple of tranches may have gotten all of their money, but the lower tranches may not have received all their money. So, this is the idea of what's referred to as financial engineering. Okay? On Wall Street, they're always looking to create new financial products, and the, the idea of a CDO is actually um, quite good. You're pulling together assets that would be difficult to sell. Nobody wants to buy an individual's mortgage or an individual student loan, but you might be interested in investing in a pool of mortgages or a pool of student loans. Uh, by breaking them up in some di into some different categories, it's rather nice because people who have a very low tolerance for risk, want very safe securities, can buy these higher rated securities which have a much lower return, those who are willing to take more risk can buy lower rated tranches which have a higher expected rate of return. So the idea is actually pretty good. One of the difficulties though with CDOs is that it's very difficult to value. It's pretty straightforward to value a bond. You take the present value of the future cash flows which will be interest payments and principal but it's difficult to measure uh, the risk or the value of some of these tranches. And the reason it's difficult is you have to go through a whole scheme of things. What happens in the economy if interest rates fall or rise or the economy goes bad and people stop repaying their mortgages? Okay. How many are going to not repay their mortgages? You know, how much money is going to go into the CDO? How much is going to be coming out? So it can be difficult to value these. Okay, the top tranche may be not so difficult because it's relatively certain they'll receive their money, but the lower tranches can be very difficult to value. And so this is this is one of the problems with these derivative securities that they can be very very difficult to value, and a lot of times people, even very sophisticated investors don't actually understand how to value them and the ratings agencies 
whether it was um, malpractice or incompetence, did a very poor job of rating many of these. Even some some um, securities that were rated AAA wound up going bankrupt. So um, or were in default. So you know these are something that only really sophisticated investors should um, should consider investing in.